got its first look at the asteroid sample returned to Earth by the University of Arizona-led OSIRIS-REx mission. We're learning some of the mystery material is already in Tucson for study. 13 News reporter Shelby Slaughter is live at the U of A with a closer look at what OSIRIS-REx brought home. Right now, scientists are still working on the outside of the collector before working their way to the inside. And I was just told minutes ago that scientists here in this building at the University of Arizona already have a sample of that dust. This is history in the making. This small vial of black dust from the asteroid Bennu has already made its way back here to Arizona. And scientists at the University of Arizona have wasted no time beginning to study it. Pierre Hanacure has been part of the OSIRIS-REx mission since 2020 and tells me the findings of this small sample is already fascinating. Actually, Bennu is, as far as we can tell from the quick look sample, is one of the most carbon-rich material that we have in our collection from an asteroid. This comes after a long-awaited arrival after the sample's collection three years ago. Project scientist for the OSIRIS-REx project, Jason Dorkin, tells me there's still a lot of work to be done. Telling me right now scientists are still working on the outside of the collector and haven't even opened it yet to see what's inside. But they want to do it right so future generations are able to study and learn from this groundbreaking sample. We have the responsibility to make sure that we, we pick up every little grain and, and secure it uh, so that it maintains its scientific integrity. Dworkin says because this is the largest sample ever brought back to Earth, NASA is working to get every bit of small grain on the outside of the collector, so there's no shortage of dust to work with. A blessing to have so much, but also responsibility, because this is a sample for the science team and for the agency and for the world to study for, as you said, decades, 50 years from now, people not yet born will look at the sample uh, using instruments that have not yet been invented to, a to a ask questions of the sample that we haven't even thought of yet. But the analyzing has already begun, both at NASA and here at home. The mission's lead scientist, Dante Loretta, showing a preview of what's already been discovered. Those are the water-bearing clay minerals, and they have this fibrous kind of structure. We call this serpentine because they look like serpents or snakes inside the sample. And they have water locked inside their crystal structure. And I want to stop and think about what that means. That water, that is how we think water got to the Earth. Hanekure says he's seeing the same thing here in his lab, too, telling me his team is also seeing those clay minerals further proving the theory of how bodies of water like lakes and oceans came to Earth. One of the, the leading hypotheses for the delivery of water to the Earth and how water actually arrived on the Earth was it was delivered through impacts, so having impact from asteroids, and so you have a lot of impacts happening, and so you don't have liquid water ar arriving on the Earth, but you have all this water trapped into minerals that impact on the Earth and bring volatile to the Earth. And and an interesting fact that I learned today, the University of Arizona Museum is going to be one of three museums to get a sample of that dust to display for the general public. It's going to be the Smithsonian, a museum in Houston, and then right here at the University of Arizona. We'll, of course, let you know when that's on display. For now, reporting from the University of Arizona campus, I'm Shelby Slaughter, 13 News. Thank you, Shelby. Happening tomorrow, Arizona Science.